少，因人寻，卡埃拉人，阿萨卡哈拉人，扎卡拉人，少爱因人寻。Namaste. So last night, I got a message from one of the sadhakas on our course site. He says, "Namaste, Swamiji." In interaction with some of the sadhakas, they told me that they are more comfortable if the pointer to God is in neutral mood in terms of gender. On another hand, we speak for Shiva and Shakti, and thus this is unavoidable. I think they must adapt to this system one way or other. Of course, I can use supreme consciousness as a pointer to God, but that's very fuzzy and not suitable for Sri Vidya. Well, it's not true either, <laughs> because okay. First of all, why do I say that this is Neo Advaita philosophy? Which is the title of the video? It smells like neo Advaita, huh? Not like Teen Spirit. <laughs> that the idea of neo Advaita is that we can jump from the lowest level of duality to the highest level of non-duality without anything in between. Huh? Here's a video with a more precise definition of neo Advaita, but let's use that just for now. So most of the people who come to our courses are on the Dvaita Vada level. You've all seen this chart so many times; huh? you should have it memorized by now. This is the chart of the four Vadas. And most of the people who come to us are on the Dvaita Vada level. So, if from the Dvaita Vada level you try to jump up to a Jata Vada, without going through the stages in between, the only result is that you're going to just fall right back down, and you'll be thinking again in terms of "I am the body" and you know duality in general. We cannot overcome duality artificially. To go from directly from the bodily concept to non-duality is illusory. It won't stick. It can't. So what happens? Person maybe imitates this non-dual understanding, and then again they fall down. When will they learn? So, all right. Let me then lay it out very scientifically. <laughs> Creation begins from Brahman, and Brahman is one. There are no distinctions like male and female, right and wrong, up and down. You know. Not even past, present, future, here or there. Huh? There are no distinctions at all. This is pure monism, kevala advaita. Now people think that this is the ultimate state, and in a way it is. But wait a minute, where are we? What is our real viewpoint, not imagined, but our actual viewpoint of our consciousness? It's in duality, right? I mean, just look around you. <laughs> Because we see the world, Ramana Maharshi says. Therefore, we are in duality, and we have to deal with that duality and connect it to the supreme. In a way that doesn't demean the supreme; otherwise, we're just demeaning ourselves, really. So, in the beginning, there is only Brahman, and Brahman is one. So then, what happens? 
a desire arises in Brahman. But wait a minute, desires can't arise in Brahman because Brahman is changeless. Huh? So this is Maya. This is Shakti. And she is the controller. Ishwari. And she manifests actually in uh, three or four different forms. Icha Shakti, which is will or desire. Jnana Shakti, which is knowledge. Ananda Shakti, which is, of course, bliss. So these Shaktis, these are powers of Brahman. Now, Brahman has to have a world to have power over. So Shakti creates that world. Oh, of course, Maya Shakti. <laughs> now, what, what is Maya Shakti exactly? Maya means literally that which is not. So she creates the illusion of a manifest world when, in fact, there is actually only Brahman. See? She even creates the form of Shiva, Ishwara. So, therefore, <laughs> she is the actual God. You see, God means the controller, Ishwara or Ishwari. So God has to be either male or female or some combination of both because there is duality in the world. There's the world and the controller. See, there's the energy and the energetic. So that's duality. And duality is always going to manifest male and female. That's the top-down logic. Now let's look at the bottom-up logic. Everybody here in this world has a mother and father. I hope. <laughs> because these two polarities have to come together and conjugate to form a new life. So their mother and father are also two. And their mother and father are also two, going all the way back to the original mother and father, which is Shiva and Shakti. It's described in the scriptures that in the beginning of creation, they had sex for a thousand years of the demigods. So that's Tantra, huh? <laughs> and what was created was the golden egg, Hiranyagarbha. Hiranyagarbha is the sum total of all the beings in the universe. By this time, already the elements have been created and the universe is spreading out and now it has to be populated. So she, they create the Hiranyagarbha which are all of the living beings, the jivas, whose karma was not finished in the previous cycle of creation. So after the devastation, they go into like an a inert state and they're kept within Brahman in, in a kind of sleep. And then when the creation begins again, they are awakened and they go out and populate the universe. So this is the cycle of creation. So you have to have a mother and father. You have to have two. You see? You have to have two, actually three, because you have the mother and father and the relationship between them. And this relationship is given in the scriptures Everything, you see, all this is coming from authorized Vedic sources. We're not making it up. It's not like we have an opinion about the way we would like the world to be. No, the world is like that. And that's why it's given in the Vedas. 
And when you interact with the world from that point of view, it responds in real time. See, this is what Buddha meant when he said that my teaching is experienced in real time by the wise people who follow it. He said, come and see. In other words, try it for yourself. Try it for yourself and you will get immediate result. Not in some future life. Huh? Not in 10 or 20 years from now immediately. So if you approach the universe as Ma, huh, the Shakti, the Creatrix, the uh, energy, the force, huh? may the force be with you, <laughs> then she responds and she is within you. Now, here's another, this is another proof. When you go to sleep at night, you lose awareness of this body. You forget all about it, and you go off in dreamland and have all kinds of adventures in a different body, a dream body. Meanwhile, your physical body is resting in the bed. Now, who is breathing? Who is beating your heart? Who is digesting your food? While you are off somewhere in another dimension. That's Shakti. That's Kundalini. Kundalini is the life energy which sits at the base of the spine. And if you go in a very quiet place and listen you can hear like a whistling or hissing noise deep within your ears. And according to the Shastras, this is the hissing of the snake of Kundalini. And when this sound stops, death is very near. This is one way that mystics know when they're going to die so they can go into samadhi. So, you see, all of this knowledge is given in the Vedas. Like, some people don't like very much our series on the thousand names, the, the Lalita Sahasranam. They think, oh, this is kind of, you know, old-fashioned, superstitious, or whatever. Uh, but actually, within these thousand names, are encoded, hidden knowledge, esoteric, very powerful knowledge. But lazy modern people want everything handed to them on a platter. Here, here's the enlightenment. Huh? It doesn't work that way. You have to earn your enlightenment. So here's another argument. Meaning comes from context. For example, a word in one context means something completely different than when it's in another context. If I say, uh, go up to the top of the hill, it means one thing. But if I say, fill up the glass, it means another thing. The context determines the meaning. And the richer the context, the more definite and the more valuable is the meaning. So when we say God is Shiva is Shakti, the controllers of the universe are a male and female couple who, although they appear as two, are actually one. <laughs> but that's another story. But when we say that, this statement comes from a huge context, I mean an incredibly rich context. Just the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam alone uh, is 1,600 pages of densely written context about the meaning of these words. 
Shiva and Shakti. And in all of it, Shakti is preeminent. That's why it's called Srimad Devi Bhagavatam and not Shiva Bhagavatam. Devi is more important than Shiva. Why? Because she is the Shakti. She is the power of Brahman. See, there's Nirguna Brahman without quality. And then there's Saguna Brahman with qualities. Both are supreme. Both are the powerful factors in our everyday life experience. Uh, Nirguna Brahman is pure awareness, which is the basis of consciousness. When Nirguna Brahman encounters Saguna Brahman, consciousness is the result. So without Saguna Brahman, without Shakti, there can be no consciousness. That's why she is often identified as consciousness, because without her, consciousness is impossible. So you see, we need to define God in terms of male and female. There's no way out of it. Anything which seems to be a way out of that, where you just jump up to the neutral Brahman, huh, is an illusion and it leads to fall down because one misses the essential process of creation, which is how we got here, where we are. We're in the middle of the creation right now. That's not artificial. That's real. You can't make it go away. Who said that famous Philip K. Dick? Reality is what remains after you stop believing in everything else. In other words, most of the world that we think we inhabit is a fabrication made of words and beliefs. And when we stop believing in those words and beliefs, what's left is the reality, the truth. So the reality is we're living in a creation. And the creation has to come from the conjugation of male and female principles, Shiva and Shakti, the substance and the energy. Therefore, <laughs> we cannot ignore their prominence. We cannot deny their supremacy. Uh, they are the world, huh? not the children, <laughs> Shiva and Shakti. Huh? So <laughs> you have to adjust to this point of view. And the best way to do that is to read the scriptures. Read the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. I mean, heaven knows I've posted the links enough on here, but I'll put them in the video description of this video so you can get started and come up to speed on this context. Because that context gives the richest meaning to the terms, the concepts of God, the Supreme, the Controller, the Creator, and so on. And that is the basis of this esoteric teaching. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.